doing? Good. What's going on, Brad? Oh, not much. Oh, man. It's great to have the guys back. It's, it's been a while, but, you know, I, it's kind of like a sense of normalcy, you know? And, I mean, the guys are in the gym now, and just being around them and hearing basketball's bounce and seeing the guys shooting on their own, it, it feels great. And I'm excited about this year's team. You know, we got the right type of guys in our program, and um, I know they're ready to compete. You know, I mean, they've been waiting a long time to be here, and, um, you know, it's going to be a great year for us. is building the dogs. As the first week of official practice approaches, the Saluki basketball team has one of its weekly Zoom meetings. What's up guys, it's Coach Mullins. We're about to have a team Zoom meeting right now with our guys and you know, obviously over the last four or five months it's been all Zoom meetings with our program and you know, we really try to stay in touch with our guys as much as possible and our main message throughout this has been able to win the weight and then we've also been teaching them, you know, why great teams are great teams or why elite athletes are elite. And it really comes down to their mindsets, their behaviors, their habits, um, then tangible characteristics that allow them to separate themselves over years of hard work. And we've showed them many different examples and tonight we're going to show them another example of why some of the elite athletes are where they are. I thought all the guys who said stuff on the Zoom last night, uh, yesterday were, you know, accurate in terms of, you know, kind of what our mindset needs to be heading into this year and in terms of stacking good practices and, and failing forward and, you know, finding ways to, you know, overcome obstacles. And a lot of that stuff and a lot of stuff we've talked to you guys throughout, really the quarantine part of this has been about the mentality, you know, of great teams or great athletes and, and why they are where they are. And the thing we stress to you is it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. I talked with Lance today about his word and his word was unrequired. And in terms of, you know, it, it's those little unrequired things that the best teams do and, you know, the best athletes are you know, the best lawyers or the best doctors, all those, you know, there's a reason why people are where they are. It's the best avenue that we found. And um, for us to be able to still not only talk about basketball, but mainly just get the guys together, you know, get them to, um, you know, get to know each other and introduce themselves because we have a lot of new guys this year. And, you know, so we didn't want the first time to ever meet each other in the middle of July when everyone's on campus. So it's been really beneficial for us. And, um, you know, I think our guys have taken away a lot of great messages that we've been able to explore with them. Listen to me when I tell you, continue to work as an individual and then be of the team. You will get the most uh, joy if you can, uh, uh, as Eric Spolster says, enjoy someone else's success. Winning is a, pri a byproduct of just doing everything right every day and taking pride in the fact that we hang our hat on, we do things the right way every day, and we can live with the result. Did you make an effort to be great? And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do every time you step on the court, every time you walk across campus, every time you walk in a classroom, you guys got to realize there's going to be a lot of college basketball players. In fact, I would have to guess 90% of basketball players this summer, they're going to act like they're working. They're going to fake grinding. They're going to be tweeting that they're working hard because they're not being held accountable by the coaching staff, which they're used to. And so if you guys are a part of that 10%, the guys that say, you know what? I know that today my coach isn't going to see me. I know that today I'm not going to have to compete against another one of my teammates. But today, I know that I'm setting myself up for the future. So that's going to give you guys a chance to be head and shoulders over everybody else. So we, we've had a lot of great names and great people to come on and talk to our guys. And, you know, I think they've all taken away different messages from them that will stick with them throughout this year and throughout hopefully their SIU career and lifetime. As official practice gets underway, 
the team must follow strict COVID guidelines and protocol. Assistant AD of Sports Medicine David Rule is one of the many who are tasked with ensuring the safety of each student athlete. When they come on campus, they're put into quarantine or an isolation period uh, for seven days. Um, during that period, we do a COVID test for them. Uh, we do daily symptom checks, twice daily temperature checks, um, and then once their test results are back, they're allowed in the building and we allow them to practice and work out in the weight room and all that. Um, so the, the daily temperature checks continue uh, throughout this whole period. Uh, they, every time they enter the building, they take their temperature. Uh, when they're active on the court, actually playing basketball, working out, they don't have to wear a mask. As soon as they come off the court, they're on the sideline. Everyone's masked. Um, they all have their own individual water bottles, so nobody's sharing water. Uh, all the coaches and staff, if, if they're on the court with the players, they're in a mask at, the, you know, at that time, anytime there's close interaction. Um, you know, so we, we have them broken into smaller groups, uh, a lot of individual work right now which helps keep uh, our spread small, but at the same time gives them that one-on-one -on -one contact with the coaches uh, so they can help improve individual areas uh, as they need. But we keep everything small, keep everyone as separate as possible. Um, and then the equipment staff does a great job. They're sanitizing the balls and everything after, um, after the workouts are done that day. It's completely different. Um, you know, we're starting at a different point in terms of physically with these guys. It's the first time in their lives for four or five months that they haven't had a gym to go to or, you know, been able to lift weights or condition or, or play pickup. Um, so physically is our biggest focus right now over this next month is getting their bodies ready to compete at a high level. Um, so we've been doing small group workouts, you know, no contact and really just trying to get the skill work in and then the physical, you know, weights and conditioning in. Uh, yeah, I feel like this first week we've been, you know, it's all just getting our body right right now because a lot of us weren't conditioning, weren't lifting as we used to. We didn't have the facilities for it, so we've been lifting hard, we've been conditioning a decent amount, and on the core workouts, coaches are they're working us hard, so I mean, we're just getting our bodies right, getting back in the rhythm of things. Things are kind of starting to flow a lot better. Um, in practices, it's just been a lot of fundamental stuff, just getting the bases down, learning the offense, learning how to space the floor and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, every week we're just going to keep getting better and better and better. Yeah, so it's kind of like baby steps, you know, step by step. You know, uh, we're doing conditioning, just trying to get back in shape. And for us, the forward, we're also uh, we're really focusing on the details, you know, how to, the, the defensive uh, details of SIU, the words to use, uh, the footwork for the bigs. Uh, just like we're going step by step right now. A familiar face Saluki fans will see on the court this year is redshirt sophomore guard Ben Harvey. He sat out last year after transferring to Southern from Eastern Illinois. You know, the, the re recruitment was tough. You know, because growing up, you know, going through the recruiting process, talking to a lot of different coaches and people can be hard on, you know, a high school kid. And even after having a pretty good freshman year at Eastern and growing up a little bit, maturing a little bit, it still was tough. You know, a lot of people calling and a lot of different faces you talk to. But ultimately, it was the coaching staff. And I, th I felt that they wanted to win at a high level. He fit what we wanted our program to be about in terms of his love for the game and his mentality. I think he's a, he's a competitive kid. You know, when he's on the court, he loves to compete. And, you know, I think he has something to prove, and that's why he wanted to come here. You know, he was one of the first kids when, you know, I got this opportunity that we reached out to and we started that recruiting process. And we were pretty consistent with him in terms of showing him why this place would be a great place for him to, you know, finish his college basketball career. I knew that I wanted to transfer, I made my mind up and hadn't really thought about the redshirt year as a whole, I just knew that I wanted to transfer. And kind of getting here, it kind of, you know, the summer was great, had a great summer, you know, focused on getting better every day. And you know, you kind of feel like a part of the team because there's no separate workouts or anything like that. And so once the season kind of started getting around, then it kind of hit me that I had to sit out this year, which, you know, hurt a little bit because I wanted to be out there. but. 
you know, and then that's when I started focusing in, talking to the coaching staff, GAs, and really focusing on how I can get better each day, whether it's in practice or individual workouts. And you know, during the redshirt year, it's a process, you know, mentally and physically. And that's just the biggest thing is trying to improve every day, no matter what it is. You know, it was a year where he attacked every workout, where he attacked the weights, where he got to understand our culture, our offensive things, defensive principles, and, and now he's ready to just step in. It's a much seamless, much more seamless transition than it would have been if, you know, he would have just came and tried to play right away. So I think he's a year ahead, um, and he's just kind of, a, although he doesn't have the experience that Lance Trent and Marcus does, he's got the knowledge that those guys got. He understands how we want to do things here and you know, I expect them to have a big year for us. I mean, I'm super excited about this year's team, you know, and I think everybody's bought into the system, whether it's the freshmen all the way to the seniors. And I think, you know, having a core group that had been here, you know, and kind of know how coaches run things and how everything goes around here helped a lot of the new guys, you know, already kind of have that feel for how things go and they're already bought into the system. So I think we're going to gel really well on this year and, you know, have a chance to for sure win the NBC championship.